Right, so this is part three of the um, building an app in Accelerator Titanium series. What I'm going to try and be quicker than last time because last video was like 20 minutes. So I know no one really wants to be watching that. Wh whoever's watching, you know what I mean. So try and keep it down a bit. I, I don't, I can't promise anything, but we'll see. I'll try and cut out as much as I can. I'll probably cut out this. <laughs> right, so. What what this part is is it's gonna be uploading an image while well, uploading a tip to the server and storing it in a database. Um, what this will include is a title, some um, description or body text, whatever you want to call it. The actual tip itself, I guess that will be, and an image to go with the tip. The image will be pushed up onto our server and the title and description will go into the database so it's alright, um, I'll go through a few things, what I think I'll do to begin with is I'll show you it in action and then I'll go through everything so let me just load this up right, so here we go right, so it's loading up you'll see um, it's the same as, as last time, it's the titles what I'm focusing on is the add window so let's open that so here what you'll see is um, now we've got this text field for the title and this text area for the tip then at the bottom we've just got add image and this picture of a, a camera so um, what you do is if you click in one of these two fields you fill in the information and then you click the camera what you need is you need a title and a, a tip before you can upload the image because once you click on the camera it um, will take an image from the photo gallery or the camera roll of the phone once you select an image it will then upload it to the server so if we click this without entering if we click the camera without entering a title or a tip we'll just get an alert like that just says enter information first I mean for a few of these things I've just put alerts because if I if I try and put too much into this, then it's going to take forever to go through it all. So wherever you see an alert within the code, just know that th that is where you could implement your own your own custom pop up, your own custom whatever. But yeah, so it's just to keep the time down. So right. So if we click in here, this is hint text. So when we click in this field, it stays there until we type something. So if we just write um, my tip then in this one with a text area it doesn't have a hint um, hint text option so what I've done here is I've pre-filled the text area with a value then added an event listener for focus and blur so if I click in it that will disappear and then if we leave without entering anything that text will come back I'll go through how that works and stuff, but it's just a way of of getting round. They're not being hint text in there, so um, we'll just write my first tip. Dot dot dot. Right to return. So now we've entered those, we can click on the camera, and it will bring up this, which is our camera roll. I've got two images. All I did was I went into the browser on the simulator and just save these two images from from uh, Google so let's select an image we've got this upload in progress this um, overlay and then success so let me just explain that a little bit is you see the um, the overlay we had where it had the indication circle which said uh, upload in progress I think it says um, I've used that as opposed to there's a loading bar that you can have like a progress bar but there seems to be well I was having issues with it and when I was looking around the forums and stuff I see that at the moment it seemed like there's a few issues with that so what I did instead was just I've got a custom view when an upload is in progress I'll show this view with just that indication that loading image and then when we get information returned from the server whether that be success or failure then I'll just hide that view so it's just it's, I guess it's a little hack of getting around that but I just thought I'd put that in so yeah so we've seen success so now what I'll do is I'll show you 
um, the actual image that was uploaded. So this is um, just good. this is my FTP directory where the images are going. This is one I did earlier, but when I click refresh, we'll have a new one in there. And that was the the new one we just did, or that one I can't remember which one now. Right, so let me show you the the cert, let me show you the PHP code that just sort of loads that image and stuff. So what we've got here, just really simple, stripped down. Again, I've purposely done it like this because if I added in all error checking and and all sorts of security stuff in this, then it would just go on forever. So somewhere down the line, I'm, I may come back and, and secure all this a, a bit more. Well, it ain't secure at all, really, but a bit more. Um, then we'll go through that. But for now, just to keep it moving, I'll just quickly go through it. So first, we're connecting to our database. And what I've created is I've created two database tables. One is for um, users, and the other is for tips. Now... What I think I might do somewhere down the line is um, what maybe when when I've finished all of the screens, what I might do is add a, a login or register screen at the beginning, and when you do that, it will it will enter a user into our our user table. But for now, I've just hard coded me in as a user with an ID of one, and then there's another table which is tips, and all that has is um, the user ID, so it can be joined to the users table, the title, the tip, and the image. So it's really simple, but um, yeah, so that's this is just connecting to our database. So then what we're doing here is we're getting the file extension of the uploaded media, or the uploaded image from our app. So all this is doing is it's using the explode function, which I've I've done a video on explode and implode. So if you don't know what that is, then there's a video there for you. So it's using the explode function. And then what we're doing is we're creating a random name for the file by just doing this. It's just um, hashing the, the current time. Um, then what we're doing is the name for our file is going to be this random name and then with the image extension that we got from this explode function so I hope that makes sense it should do um, basic I just got an email basically all it is we get an extension creating a random name and then we're putting those two together and that's our new name for this file the reason I've done that is say you're uploading images from your phone and you're not changing the name or for whatever reason you don't want to have duplicates being uploaded because they they will overwrite each other so you don't want that so yeah so we're setting our upload directory which in this instance is there's a folder called images in the same um, directory as this upload.php file so then we just use this now to put into the the move uploaded file function which what that does is it moves a file which has been posted in a form <coughs> well not necessarily in a form but a file that has been posted it will move that to a directory of your specification so it moves it from the temp directory to wherever you stay here so what we've got here now then is if we can do this this move upload it move the file then it's been a success and if we've done that then we're going to enter the tip into our database if um, for whatever reason we cannot move this file then we get into this block and all we do is echo back failed and failed is what you would see in the alert that comes up at the end I think at the beginning of the video I did one and the alert said success and that's because it did upload the file successfully so then all we're doing quickly is putting the title and the tip into these variables here we're just doing this quick um, real escape string on them just to strip anything that's a bit dodgy from the text because we don't obviously don't want that going into the database and then we're just doing this quick simple insert here I mean like I said you could add a lot more security to this 
and a lot more uh, error checking and stuff. But for this example, I'm just going to leave it like this, and then you guys, whoever is you going to use this afterwards, just add your own that you need. So yeah, so that's that. Right, so let's go back to the app. So also, as you can see, is um, once we uploaded the image, well the tip, sorry, I keep saying image, but once we uploaded the tip, um, on success or on failure, it puts these text boxes back to um, their, their empty state. So then you could upload another one straight away, so we could do my second tip this one is great then we'll upload the other image I guess this time so load in progress and then success and send some boxes back um, let me just show you right so here's our tips that we've done so as you can see the one we just did was my second tape my second tip this one is great that was the latest one we did and the one before that was this this very first one was just a test I did just before I started recording because obviously I didn't want to start recording and then it did not work and then I have to stop and all the rest of it so so yeah but then that that's it and then I may as well show you the users table which I mentioned and like I said all this is really simple it's just a username email password I've just hard coded this in, but what I think I'll do is once we've done all the windows, go back and we'll create a login register screen when you first open the app. So yeah, I think we'll do that. But we'll do that at the end because we don't want to, every time we open the simulator, we don't want to be having to log in and all the rest of it. So yeah, we'll leave that to the end. It's not important. So yeah, so the, um, one thing I will mention is the reason why you'd probably have, why you would have the separate user accounts for each upload is if you was going to use something like this and um, and put it in the app store and have people using it, then you'd want to know who was uploading which tip or what, it doesn't have to be a tip, whatever you're doing, but who was, which post relates to which user. So then you can monitor it and people can then get their own get their own tips or posts or whatever within the app so it's just it's one of those things it's necessary right so let's go through this then so I'm in add.js and that's our add window so we went through this before and I believe all we had was the main window label and back button um, there's a quite a bit more in here now it's um I mean the formatting again is it's not perfect. I mean I've just put it all together. There's there's probably going to be things in here that you would change or want to change, and then that that's what this is for. This isn't this isn't a best practices video by any means. It's just showing you how to build an an app that does uh, various things. So don't don't um, take everything as perfect. This is just a way to show you a working example of of this so so yeah so anyway let's get into it so yeah so title this is the text field where you write the um, the title of the tip so yeah so all this is it's just a text field we've given it um, well the border doesn't matter actually because we've actually given it a custom background image and that is let me just get that up that is this As you can see it's like it's just a, an image really so we've given it that and then the next one is the text area. Uh, we've given the text area. Oh no, sorry. Yeah, text area. With the text area, I couldn't give it a background image. So I looked through the forums and stuff. And um, the best way that I could see to um, get the same sort of effect was to create a, a view as a container. Give that the background image. And then add a text area to that container so oh yeah also so you add that text area to the container and you give the text area a background color of transparent so that way it gives the effect let's have a look so if you see this text area it gives the effect that that is all all one really but when really it's a text area attached to another view but it's just a way of getting it to work so um, one of the other things I mentioned before was the hint text so what we've got is we've got this focus event 
on the text area and we've got this blur event and all this does is on focus it checks it sets the value to nothing so it removes the um, pseudo hint text I guess you could call it it removes that and it changes the color to a darker color because if you see on um, the text field the hint text is like a really light gray but when you start typing um, it's it's a different color so we want to give that same effect <coughs> sorry so on focus um, we set the color to this this darker gray but on blur if the value is if if we, if when we leave this text area we leave without putting any text so if the value is empty then we want to add, add our hint text and then change the colour back to this lighter grey so that's all that's doing it's, it's, it's really simple so then what we've got is our camera button at the bottom and um, what we've got here is we've got a label and an image view so the label is, let me get it up, the label is this part here that says add image and the image view is this part here. So yep, so there's our label. We're using our custom font again, which I went through in the, uh, sorry. And then here's our image view. It's just a camera image. So that's that. Also we've got, um, there's an event listener on the on the camera image but I'll get to that in a second because it's a bit further down so the next part we've got is I've just put this little title here of progress bar but it's not really a progress bar it's it's um, a view with an activity indicator and a label but it's just so this when it, it's just so the user gets some indication that something is happening if we didn't have that and they clicked. Um, they said selected their image, and nothing happened. They think the app was broke. They you you need to let the users know that something is going on. So yeah, so we've got our view. I set the background to black, and then gave it a fifty percent opacity. So that was just so. Um, I mean, it's just like a standard, isn't it? In in web and wherever, you you um, with most with most. Uh, loading indicators or something it will normally be some sort of overlay over the current screen that with some sort of transparency on it so we've done that then we have our activity indicator um, yeah so we've set the activity indicator and then we've got the label which just says upload in progress and then what we've done is I've put these I've, I've hid these from the screen because we don't want to show them until um, a tip is being uploaded to the server. So here, we've now got our um, event listener on the the photo, on the camera image. So what we've got here is first, I'm doing a check where if the title and the tip is not empty, carry on. But if we go to the bottom, if it is empty, if they are empty, so we haven't put a title or we haven't put a tip, then we give this alert that says enter the information first. So what you could do here, as opposed to having an alert, is you could have a, another view that you show that is um, really well designed and all the rest of it that just tells your users what's going on, why you, you know, you know. But for this, as I mentioned, I've just put an alert in. There's no need to to do everything like you see here in the cancel and error which I'll get into in a minute, they're just alerts as well. It's just a way of speeding it all up. So, and by speeding it up, I mean speeding up the video up, not speeding up the app. Right, so, if they have entered a title and a tip, then we get into this. So what we're doing is we're opening the user's photo gallery. Then, when they, success is when they have selected an image. So, yeah, so success is when they've selected an image. What we're doing is we're checking the media type that it is a photo. So if they select a video, it, this none of this will run. So what we're doing is we put the image, which is event.media, we're putting that into this image variable. Then what we're doing is we're attaching that image variable to this uh, temporary image view. And then what we're doing is we're turning this image view to an image. 
So the reason I've done that is then that way we can upload um, the the image as an actual image as opposed to being a blob of data. And I hope that makes sense. If we didn't do this and we tried sending um, this event.media, it's actually just a blob. It's not. It's not the. Um, it's not the actual image, basically. So I hope that makes sense. I, I'm not 100% sure if this is a necessity, but it's how I've done it and it works, and I'm happy with it. So it's up to you guys. If you want to look into it a bit more, then you're free to. Sorry. So right, so now we've got the information that we're going to post. So what we're going to post is the image we've put in this variable, image2, the title, and the tip. So we're getting these directly from the text field and the text area. Dot value just means get the value of this element. So in this case, it's the title and the tip. So then what we want to do is as we're in, um, we're in the process of uploading our tip we want to show our um, activity indicator and then we're going to send the request so what we're doing is we're creating this um, network HTTP client we're posting the data to this address just ignore that mine doesn't have a .php it's just because it's the way of it's the way I've set up my HT access um, but you guys would probably, you guys would more than likely just put .php on the end of there, or whatever language you're using. But yeah, but I don't. It's just, it's just a thing for me. So yeah, so then we've got onload, which means on successful. Uh, wait, a, it it means that when the when the data has has reached the server, on this will sorry, this will return whatever there is to return from from the server not the server from the page so what we're doing is we're doing alert this dot response text so what this is this is literally what we are echoing out on the page so as I showed you earlier I'm echoing success or failure and that is it and that is what this dot response text is that's all that is so then what we're doing is this is the end then so we want to hide our activity indicator we want to reset the value of the text field and then we want to do the same for the text area but what we've got to do is sorry you have to excuse me I've got a cold so what we want to do is um, set the the value of the text area to your tip and then set the color of the text back to the lighter shade and then finally outside of all of this we have the which this actually sends the request so we're sending our post with um, with all of our all of our variables I guess well yeah with all of our variables to send which is this which we set here hope that makes sense I'm gonna cut this up a bit because I know I was sneezing a lot then and stuff so any questions just ask me and you know hopefully we'll sort it out for you so then we've got these other events so we went through success so cancel is when I'll show you cancel actually so cancel is when let me just put anything in here so cancel is when you come into here and then you click literally click cancel you get cancelled error could be for many reasons which could be um, no no network present no Wi-Fi, no um, 3G or anything else, or it could be for whatever. If you can actually get, if you just do a quick search on um, the Accelerator forums, you'll be able to see what is actually can what is actually returned here, because there's a few things that you can use which will help you, will which will help you find out why you have received the error. Um, this just says we're accepting photos and allow image editing true, which we don't need to be honest could probably take that out um, so yeah so that's it how long was that right so the next video what I'll do promise it will be shorter and it will be what should it be do -do -do. it will be retrieving the tips from the um, server so we'll do the 
Let's have a look. What windows we got actually? My tips. We'll do the my tips window, I guess. My tips or latest tips, because they'll they're both kind of the same. No, what we'll do, we'll do the latest tips. Yeah. Because we'll do the my tips one afterwards. But yeah, alright. So we'll do that. So hopefully that was helpful. Hopefully I wasn't coughing and sneezing all the way through that. I tried not to, but I'll try and cut it all out. So yeah, alright. Any questions just let me know and we'll get it sorted.